everyone, welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. Today, we're gonna take an in-depth look at the CGS Group Nautilus 45. Uh, this suppressor has been a long time coming for me. Uh, I remember back when Josh brought the pretty late prototype version of the Kraken 9 to my house one day, uh, he brought the Nautilus 45 with him. Now, this was a very early, in the raw, early prototype of the Nautilus 45. We did a yard pop with it and it sounded phenomenal. I'm not sure if I put that video on Instagram or not. I'm gonna have to check way back in my years of history there on Instagram to see if it's on there. Uh, but in any case, now it's finally here. It's production ready. It's ready to be sent to your dealers. Uh, and from what I hear, they've made even more improvements on it. Uh, so it's even quieter than I first originally heard it. Uh, now this particular Nautilus 45 itself is pretty special because I'm gonna be giving it away to one of my lucky patrons in December. Uh, if you guys have been paying attention, I've been uh, giving away gift cards and suppressors every month on my Patreon account. Uh, we just gave away a Energetic Arm at Vox S on the 12th. It was uh, the winner's first can, so that's pretty cool. Then in November, we're gonna give away the Energetic Arm at NYX Ma 2, and then in December, this Nautilus 45. So that's gonna be pretty cool, and I hope it makes somebody's Christmas. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead Open the box, see what it comes with, take a look at the specs, how it comes apart, and then of course, we'll hit that range. All right, now you would normally have a manual and takedown tool in here, but I had already taken those out earlier. Package in some nice foam so you won't have any problems during your transit to your dealer. Let's get rid of that. And that leaves us with the Nautilus itself, which is really beautifully done, and a takedown tool. The same takedown tool that their Hydra and Kraken use, so that's pretty cool. So if you already have one of those cans, you're good to go, and now you have an extra. Let's go ahead and cover the specs real quick, and then we'll get down to um, the baffle design and takedown and cleaning and stuff like that. The overall length is 8.6 inches, the diameter is 1.375 inches and it weighs in at 10.5 ounces. Now, while we're on the weight, all that weight is back here in the booster housing assembly and the blast baffle. So the front of this can is really light and you're about to find out why. As far as materials are concerned, you have a 7075 T6 aluminum end cap and front cap and those are going to be, uh, looks like they're type 3 hard coat anodized. The tube itself is 7075 T6 with type 3 hard coat anodizing on it. And then you have a 17.4 heat treated stainless steel booster housing and piston, both of those black nitrided. Now the first baffle in here, the blast baffle, that's gonna be 17.4 heat treated stainless steel with a black nitride coating on it. Okay, so that's gonna protect from baffle erosion, and stuff like that from, uh, you know, unburnt gunpowder eating up the bore aperture on a soft baffle. What I mean by soft baffle is if you had an aluminum baffle here, it would, uh, it would easily be worn down through years of use. Now, the subsequent baffles in the stack are all 7075 T6 aluminum with a type 3 hard coat anodizing. So that type 3 hard coat anodizing is going to protect your, your aluminum baffles after the fact, after that stainless steel blast baffle. So the reason they do that is because of weight. When you're shooting usually you know subsonic velocity center fire cartridges through here you really don't need stainless throughout this whole can okay with stainless yes you can take it throw it in an ultrasonic cleaner so maintenance is going to be a little easier but you're going to sacrifice a lot of weight and a lot of weight on the end of a handgun doesn't feel really good so like i said all the weight on this can is balancing back here on the booster assembly which would be closer to the muzzle end of your firearm so Again, pretty much all aluminum, save for the, the housing here at the rear, the piston, and the first baffle in the baffle stack. Now that does bring your rating up to subsonic 300 blackout, and of course, nine, uh, nine millimeter, 40, and 45. So I have a hunch that this is gonna sound pretty darn good on nine millimeter. Now the Kraken 9 that I referenced earlier is a very, very quiet suppressor. But anytime you're going to shoot a sub caliber through a can, meaning shooting 9mm through a 45 caliber can, um, you're going to get even less back pressure at the ejection port of your host firearm. Okay, so 
I'm hoping it sounds even quieter. Uh, Bobby at CGS Group Sound uh, told me that the Kraken 9 still sounds better, but um, Josh, who, in, who actually designed this at CGS Group, said they sound pretty much identical, especially as far as tones concerned. So I'm really excited to get this thing out there and see what it actually sounds like in person. Now that we have the ratings out of the way and all the specs, let's go ahead and crack this sucker open and see what it looks like. Again, same takedown tool as the rest of their lineup. You just line up the four spanner holes with the ones on the with the spanner holes on the front cap, okay? And then just loosen it up. Once I get it loose, I should be able to use my palm of my hand. Yeah. All right. All right, now this should just, I haven't taken this apart yet, guys. I'm doing this first time with you. So let's see if this all slides out nice. Come on. Looks like we have a black, oh, is that it? <laughs> it looks like that's it. I think I got the blast baffle. We'll find out in just a minute. Nope, these are all really light. So it's, oh, there it is. Aha, yes, much heavier and a little bit different design from the rest of the baffles here. So let me go ahead and just line these up. I'll throw up some beautiful B-roll here for you guys to look at. And here is a close-up look at the completed baffle stack. So that is what is in the inside of the Nautilus 45. Now to further take down the suppressor, the the rear booster housing does not require a proprietary tool. Okay, they designed it so you can kind of turn your fingers into like a claw shape here, like so, to get a good grip on it. You should just be able to loosen it. So if you can hear that sound being picked up on my lapel mic here on my shirt, you can hear the O-ring rubbing past the uh, piston. All right, we got it. Ooh, that is ridiculously light. Good night. <coughs> That's hilarious. And then of course you have the rear cap with that o-ring, your spring, and your piston. So that is the suppressor completely disassembled. So now that we have that taken apart, let's go ahead and look at uh, the, the actual design of the baffle. So if you guys have been uh, paying attention any length of time to my channel and you've seen some reviews I've done with CGS Group, you know that this is called their Orion baffle. What it essentially is, is a, is a, ca a captive system here. So once it's constructed, once it, the stack is assembled, you have an outer tube assembled. So what that's gonna do is in between these lips, it's gonna trap all the carbon and gas within the baffle stack assembly, making disassembly from this tube a lot easier later down the road when you have a lot of rounds on it before taking it apart. So if this was all open exposed K baffles, you would have deposits of carbon, right? And lead all on the inner wall of this tube. So when you go to slide out the baffles, they might not come out if, you'd have, if you don't take it apart every 100 rounds or so. You might have to use like a wooden dowel to shove them out. The technology we're seeing on suppressors nowadays is to design the baffle stack to form a secondary tube that's captive, okay? So uh, nothing groundbreaking there, but their baffle design is very efficient and uh, makes use of a lot of volume, okay? So looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, just counting those just now on camera, I noticed that two of these baffles are actually shorter than the rest of the stack and I didn't read the manual and I don't know where the hell I put it. So let me call Josh right here on camera. I've never done this before and uh, see what the hell I did. Let's see if he picks up. Josh Parker, CGS Group. Hey buddy, I'm actually recording the uh, Nautilus video right now and I'm, I'm still alive and I totally can't find the manual and I'm sitting here taking apart the baffle stack and I noticed 
There's two There's baffles. Two short ones in the front. Ye okay, so they go in the front. Yep. Like the front muzzle side or near the piston. Like near the muzzle on the front cap. Okay, so those go towards the very front, and then the rest of the taller ones, and then your blast baffle, correct? Right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. No problem. All right. See you. Well, there you go. That is a first for the NFA Review Channel. When in doubt, just call the person that invented the damn thing. So, and I'm pretty sure they line up all their, all their porting the same direction. So we'll line up all those. And then these are the two shorter baffles. See, I told you they kept R&Ding this can for years because I definitely don't remember the two shorter baffles when we shot it in my backyard, and then your blast baffle here. Now as far as cleaning this, it is a aluminum type baffle, so you're gonna have to just get in there with a wire brush and some solvent on anything but the blast baffle. The blast baffle and the piston you can throw in an ultrasonic cleaner, everything else, just do it by hand. Again, it doesn't need to be squeaky clean. Some cans actually get quieter and duller with sound if they have a little carbon buildup in there, okay? So let's go ahead and reassemble this. We'll put the blast baffle on top. Again, I like to line up all those ports with the writing on the suppressor so I know how to change my point of impact shift in between cleanings. Okay, which we'll get to in just a second. Once the stack's in there, just throw your front cap on. And then I'll give it a good tighten with the tool. Come on. If I can find the hole. And then uh, here's these piston and spring. Now, looking at the piston here, you see these little marks. Again, I'll throw up some B-roll here so you can really see it. Those are identifiers, okay, on the piston. So they actually have a coded chart. They didn't actually write like half by 28 or 13 by 5 by 1 or 5, 7, 8 by 28, which is what this is, uh, on the piston. It's actually coded. Uh, which I actually like because it allows me to do two things. Now I actually know that I can line up the piston once it engages the teeth inside the booster housing. Once it lines up, I know where to change my point of impact, okay? Now what I mean by that is that all suppressors in some way or another will change the point of impact shift. Once you add this weight to your gun and the uh, the gases behind the projectile are changed when the gas is cross jetting in between each baffle. You can actually change the trajectory of the round. Okay, it's called point of impact shift. You can tune that by using this as a clock. Now I'll use one as an example. This is the one we're going to use at the range. This is another Nautilus 45 that I've already shot. Okay, you see the notches here on my barrel, so I, I know where the piston is at its orientation at all times. So I can use that to help clock the suppressor. So you see how I have the writing on the side of the gun? If I'm shooting the gun and it's not hitting point of aim, you can pull the suppressor forward and rotate it to another clock position inside that booster's assembly housing, okay? And you can keep doing that all the way around until you fine tune that bullet's impact to your point of aim, okay? So that's how point of impact shift and tuning works on a suppressor. The Nautilus just makes that job a little easier, so. Well, I'm pretty sure we covered everything from the specs to its rating to what it looks like on the inside. I think it's time to hit that range. Let's bring these two hosts, you know, because then it's 1911 versus 2011. This gun, we already know, sounds great with the uh, Kraken 9. And then the Remington R1 is actually, you know, for the money. I mean, it comes with the suppressor sights, a threaded barrel already, which I had coated black, but. I mean, these things are fairly cheap, and it runs really well. In fact, I think that gun has like 4,000 rounds through it without a single malfunction. So we'll bring those two, and uh, let's put this thing to the test. Let's get out there.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are done filming for today. Hurricane Michael is beating off. Wow, that didn't sound right. <laughs> is beating up the, the coastline off our west coast. So uh, I've had uh, wind throughout the day, so hopefully that didn't ruin all of the audio today, but I had to get this review done. I'm getting really busy planning for Suppress Fest. More on that in just a second. Uh, the Nautilus 45. Awesome performance. Like I said, we had a long wait. I remember shooting the prototype of this in my backyard, like I said, over two years ago, and they've made improvements since then. So kudos to CGS for that. Shooting nine millimeter through this sounded exactly like the Kraken 9 to me. I asked Bobby over at CGS Group if they're comparable. He said the Kraken 9 edges it out a little bit in the suppression. I don't think it does. To my ears, I can't discern any difference between the Kraken and this when shooting on that STI, even with the louder Fiocchi 158 grain ammo. So I wasn't using the 165 grain hush, so keep that in mind. On the 45, had a, I wouldn't call it first round pop. I'd call it uh, just, a, just a slightly noticeable difference between the first shot and the subsequent shots in the magazine. It wasn't like a bang, like a loud first round pop like you would get on like a 22 can. Um, but it was a little noticeable. Uh, that was the suppressor burning up all the O2. Um, but that being said, you can easily shoot this thing all day without ear protection. Had a really nice low tone to it. You could actually hear the mechanics of the slide when I was out there shooting in that open field. So that's something to take note of. Again, nine millimeter was insanely quiet. I was gonna try to shoot the, uh, the Kraken 9 end cap on it to really tighten up the bore aperture, but I figured it's just a waste of time because it sounded so good without it. it it just wasn't, you weren't gonna be able to tell the difference at home and I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference here in person. So uh, definitely a home run. If you're on a budget, you can only do one can right now, go for the Nautilus because you can shoot 45, 40, and nine millimeter through it. Again, the ammo we were using today, uh, we have a new company. I met them, actually I didn't meet them. I was given a box of their ammo by the guys at the Rugged booth at the Iraq Fat shoot this past weekend. So I'm actually going to track down that company because that ammo sounded great. Uh, here's a little B-roll shot of the ammo. And then of course the Fiocchi 158 grain is what we ran through the 9mm all day. So hopefully I'll, I'll be able to track them down and get a line on uh, their suppressor oriented 45 ammo. Now I've said it once and I'll say it again. I do my best to record these so you guys get a feel for what they actually sound like. But if you really want to hear what they sound like, you're going to have to see it in person and hear it in person. So that is why I do these two annual shooting events. My next event is going to be out here on November 10th, Suppress Fest. So check out SuppressFest.com. You can sign up with your email to RSVP for free, and that automatically enters you in a chance to win a VIP package giveaway. So that's pretty cool. So over 20 companies, all of those companies are going to have suppressors for you to shoot all day, ammo on them and they're all giving away awesome raffle prizes. It's gonna be a great day, you don't wanna miss it. We have people already traveling from all over the United States to come down. We have a hotel block set aside, more details on the website, make sure you check it out. And as far as videos and giveaways, again, I'm giving away this Kraken to one lucky Patreon supporter out there on December 5th. And before that, I have giveaways on November 5th and October 12th. So. Trying to hook you guys up the best I can with the $600 in gift cards every month and a suppressor. I'm gonna try to do that from now until forever. So as long as uh, you guys are hooking me up to help the operating cost of the NFA Review Channel, I'm gonna do my best to return the favor. So uh, again, if you like what you saw today, make sure to click that thumbs up button and click that subscribe button. Check that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos and I'll see you next time.